Hi, this is Tom Does Tech. I'm Tom, and in this video, we're going to be punishing scammers with Puppeteer. So early this week, my sister got this text message that says, please confirm your details for shipment today, otherwise your parcel will be returned to retailer. She asked us if this was a scam, and we said, yes, obviously this is a scam. And I went to this link here and filled out the form with a bunch of dummy data and figured that at the end, they want you to put in their credit card details. So I decided to write a script with Puppeteer to automate this form so I can punish them with lots of fake form submissions. So this is obviously for experimental purposes and I do not suggest that you go ahead and start spamming people because that is obviously illegal. So I'll give you a demo of the script that I wrote and what it does so we can run it here with yarn dev. The script will open a new window. It'll wait for the window to load and it'll fill in this first form section here, and then it will go to a new URL. This URL changes every time, and we generate a transaction ID. It'll fill it in with some dummy credit card details, and then submit the form, and then this form will tell us that those credit card details are incorrect. But the beauty is that no matter what we put in here, this form is going to tell us this, and so they're going to be logging these credit card details and they're going to try them later. And they're going to have a bunch of dummy data that doesn't actually work. And we're going to send them lots of data. So let's get started building this script with Puppeteer. So I'm in VS Code in a new directory and we're going to first initialize our project with yarn in it. And then we're going to initialize a TypeScript project with MPX TypeScript in it. And then we can install some dependencies. So we're going to be using Puppeteer. We're going to be using Faker to generate some fake details. We're going to use NanoID to generate a fake transaction ID. And we're going to use fake credit card that is going to create fake credit card details. Once our dependencies have installed, we can install some dev dependencies. So because we're using TypeScript, we're going to install TS Node, the types for Puppeteer, the types for Faker, and TypeScript. So if Puppeteer may take a few seconds to install. That's because it is quite a large library. So I've seen people do this with Python a lot. And the technique there is to analyze the network request and then replicate the network request with a bunch of dummy data and then send that network request a bunch of times. And that is a good way to do it. But I thought I would use Puppeteer for this as it's a little bit different. So we're going to create an index.ts. And inside our index.ts, we're going to import Puppeteer. We're going to import custom alphabet from NanoID. We're going to import Faker, and we're going to import our fake credit card details. The next thing we want to do is to create a function called run. And run is going to be an async function. And inside run, we're going to launch a new browser with Puppeteer. And we're going to say headless false. So we're going to be able to see what this browser is doing. We can change this to headless true or omit this property here if we don't want to actually see the browser. We're going to create a new page and then we're going to go to this page here. And this is the scam page that asks us for our details. So in the scam page, there was a unique ID. So we're going to use nano ID to generate this unique ID. So it's different every time. So you can see here that we create a 30 character long unique ID and I'll change that to 32. And we can move this outside of the run function because we don't need to initialize these functions every single time we run this run function. And we can just call browser.close here and we will await browser.close and we can come into our package and we can add one script that is going to run our index.ts. So let's run that and see how it works. So we obviously need to run this run function and we can run yarn dev. And you can see here it opens a new browser and then it opens a new page and then it closes the page. So this is looking good so far comment out the browser.close for now and have a look at the page. And so we can see what we need to do to fill it out. So if we inspect element on this first name and last name, you can see here that the only 
selector we have is the placeholder. So we have the placeholder first name, and then this is going to be the same for all these details. And then we need to click the button. So we need to have a look at the button and see what our selector is. Okay, so we have an ID on the button. Great, so let's get started filling in this form. So you can see here, I have a variable called first name that I'm calling faker.name.firstname. And this will generate a new first name every single time. We're gonna focus on the element with the placeholder first name. And then we're going to type our first name into that box. And we're just going to repeat this process for the rest of the steps. So you can see I'm doing the exact same thing with last name, street or address, zip code slash postcode, email address, phone number, and password. And we can run our script again, and we should see this form get filled out. And you can see here that it has filled out the form for us. And the next thing to do would be to click this submit button and go to the next step in the form. So we know the submit button had an ID of submit. So we can say page.click and then put our selector in here and it should click the submit button. Let's run it and check it out. Awesome, so we're now onto the second part where we can fill in the credit card details and click the accept and then continue. So we're going to wait for an element to appear on the next page because the loading time can be any number of seconds. We don't actually know how long to wait. So we're just going to wait for this element to appear and then we know we can start filling in the form on page two. So we can generate a fake visa card here with a CVV. And then we can put our cursor in the credit card number field and then type the credit card number. We can fill in the card holder name with the same details that we used above. So the form looks a little bit more legit. We can fill in the CVV field with the credit card details. And we need to cast this to a string because if we cast, if we use a number here, the paged keyboard.type doesn't accept a number. It will only accept a string. So we need to do a little bit of trickery here to get the expiry month. So we need to create this function called pad and that will add a zero to the first part of the string if the number is between one and nine. So the form expects a number to be 0102 through to 12 for the 12th month of the year. And so we need to pad that out so we can select the month field. So if we come to the top of the file, we can create this padding function. So the pad function is going to take a number. And if the number is less than 10, it's just going to add a string of zero to the front of the number. Otherwise, it's just going to return the number that it was passed in. While we're here, we can get the expiry year. It's just going to be the second segment of the expiry date path that our credit card returns. And then we can fill in our expiry month and expiry year. And then let's have a look at what our script does now. So we should see all the fields being filled in. And if we do, then the next part will be to accept the terms and conditions and then click submit, wait for the form to be submitted and then close the browser and repeat it several more times. Yep, so we can see here that it fills in a credit card number, it fills in the name, and it selects the expiry month and expiry year, and it puts in the CVV. Next, we wanna click this little box here and the continue button. So the accept box has an ID of TNC, and so we can call page.click on that selector. And then the submit button has a type of Submit, so we can click on that selector. And let's run our script again and see it submitting the form. And we can see this form is being submitted now and it should tell us that we've been blocked. Yep, we've been blocked for security reasons. Awesome, our script is looking good. So the next thing we wanna do is wait for about five seconds for that blocked pop-up to come up, and then we can close our browser again. So we have this run and it runs once when we run yarn dev, and that's cool, but uh, it'd be nice if we could run this a few more times without having to do anything. So their database gets filled with a bunch of junk. So I'm just gonna call a for loop here, and I'm gonna say, run this while I is less than 10. And then I'm going to run my script again, and I should see 10 windows pop up 
all filling in their form. My computer is going a little bit crazy here because I've got a lot of forms going on and you can see them all filling out. And all of our windows are closed and the script ran in 87 seconds. So that is how to punish a scammer. Again, please don't do this at home because spamming is obviously illegal and I'm not promoting that at all. Thank you for watching and please make sure you subscribe and like the video.